cryptocurrencies running into headwinds, not just in the U.S., but also in China, you know, with this talk about the Chinese government cutting off the power supply to Bitcoin miners. I mean, how serious do you think that is? You know, I think this is really the, the kind of final strike uh, of the Chinese government's um, desire to reset the entire story of blockchain. I think what they want to do is clear the decks and they've done it with exchanges, they've done it with ICOs and now they're doing it with mining. I think ultimately they understand the value and the potential and the utility for society, for the economy, for industry to build anew and I think that's what they're doing. I don't think this is the end of exchanges, I don't think it's the end of ICOs. This is merely the Chinese government resetting and taking control of what they actually believe will be a, a truly transformational uh, technology. Meantime, other cryptocurrencies getting dragged down today. Uh, Corey, you spoke with the CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse. Take a listen to what he had to say. There's no doubt 2017 has been, you know, amongst other things, the year of crypto. And within the year of crypto, XRP has outperformed every other digital asset out there. So uh, year to date, as, your, as that chart showed, we're up about 20,000%. That's from December 27th, Corey, but you know, Ripple yeah. uh, going down with some of the others today. What do you make of it? Yeah, I think the volatility in, in these, uh, uh, I'm trying to not say something obvious. It's obviously been volatile with these, uh, with the, with these, with these currencies or these trades. Um, and, and I, but I think that what our traditional uh, uh, lens of looking at the volatility in equities, for example, say, wow, it's down a lot since October, December 27th, or down less in the last hour. I, I took last week off, so I looked at my Bloomberg terminal. Let me show you my Bloomberg terminal. When we look at uh, what happened to Ripple trading over the last day, yeah, sure enough, it's down 11%. But if I change this chart, so let's say the last 14 days, so there's an interday chart for 14 days, which on the Bloomberg terminal is a GIP 18. Well, look, it's up. It's up a lot. It's up, you know, 100%, 180, 38% in the last 14 days. So I think that one of the interesting things is the the volatility that we've seen uh, tends to uh, uh, take the headlines. But the long-term rise that we've seen over the course of long term, if long term is a year, uh, really tells more of the story. And I think more to the point, again, when you look into the details and you see the great differences between Ripple and Bitcoin, uh, between the XRP and, 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 and the like-minded blockchain technology, but the very different ways that they work, the different ways that they trade, and the different problems they're trying to solve, you find a much more interesting story. And uh, again, that long-term lens, even if one year is long-term, is not the lens that we're used to applying when it comes to moves in equities, but maybe the appropriate one to apply even though and even though interestingly the futures contracts have not reduced the volatility in the trade in Bitcoin. So Jahan you told us that Bitcoin would hit $50,000 by the end of the year. You said that last month. Do you believe that will still happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think what we're seeing right now in the volatility is the market is inhaling and exhaling uh, and you know as Corey was saying, what we're really seeing in the long term is the body of blockchain, of the application side, is continuing to develop. And I really think in 2018, not only will we see uh, you know, $50,000 price levels for Bitcoin, but I think what we're going to be seeing is cryptocurrency and blockchain technology emerging from its adolescence, its awkward, ugly adolescence, and really coming into its own as an empowered and self-confident, self-aware technology. And we're not going to be talking about how uh, you know, blockchain is uh, impacting the markets. We're going to be talking about how blockchain is impacting the world.